Hey, City Church, we're so glad you could join us in this service. We are looking forward to what the Lord has in store for us. My name is Sam. I'm Abigail. We are so glad that you're here with us. We want to make sure that you know that there are ways that you can contact us if you would need to. There are links in the description box below for all kinds of things, giving and a way to contact us there. So go ahead and use those if you need to get a hold of us. We also want you to be able to jump into the live chat this morning, say hello to the folks there, let us know where you're joining us from. That will be a great way to build a community in this space. We're gonna go ahead and worship the Lord together. This is such a special time because it plows the heart and gets us ready for what the Lord is about to speak to us. So engage and, and, and uh, just reach in for the presence of God so that you can sense him right there. He promised, he said, he dwells in the praises of his people. continue again here with our attitude of worship. We're going to do that with our tithes, our offerings. When we're going to dig in, we're going to read some word together. Just remember, 
Uh, for those, maybe if you're new here, we have some giving stations around. There's an electronic one. Again, for those of you joining us online, so glad you're with us right now. Don't forget to check down on the description links down below. There's a link for giving down there that'll help you get through that. But this morning, let's do this. We're just going to declare some scripture together in a good, hearty, loud voice. Okay, can we do that? All right, good. Well, hopefully the scripture is better than the amen. All right, here we go. Give, and it'll be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Thank you, Father. All right, here we go. Here's our prayer today. As I give in today's offering, I give with joy and with a generous spirit. I'm believing God to provide for my needs. I also trust him to supply over and above my needs so that I can be a blessing to others in Jesus' name. Amen to that and amen. Yes, Father, right now we do thank you for that. I want to thank you, Lord, that you can do above and beyond even what our needs are, the things that we ask or we even know right now. <laughs> that, Lord, again, as we just prayed a minute ago, you're already preparing for that. <laughs> Lord, you already know that that bill, that thing is coming, and you've prepared a way to pay for it even right now. We just thank you that, um, Lord, as we just give, we do want to give with a generous heart, oh Lord. That, Lord, we don't want to do this begrudgingly or just out of, well, we read it once in the Bible, and that means we got to do it. No, we want to do that because we just want to please you, oh Lord, and do as you would have us do. So bless the giver this morning. Again, provide miracles, even, Lord, within finances. Lord, things that just don't even make sense to us. <laughs> things that don't make sense to us, oh Lord, that only make sense to you. And we can just stand to be grateful for what you did. So we just thank you for that, and we just praise you for hearing all of those awesome things. We want in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. amen. We're going to be talking about closeness in crisis. And as I was praying to God, trying to see, Lord, what is it that you have for me, first and foremost, but also for your people over the course of the next however many minutes. God really just put on my heart the fact that there's a lot of people going through a lot of challenging circumstances right now. There's a lot of people that are facing hard situations, whether it's themselves, in their close circle, in their family, with friends. I, I mean, I have a variety of people that are close to me that I know are going through challenging circumstances from people whose parents are dying because of very real physical ailments to folks being hospitalized. I can count at least in this room three or four people that have within the past week or two had surgeries. Like there's just a lot of stuff going on, a lot of really challenging circumstances that are happening in people that I love and I believe the church at large. And the Lord was bringing that to memory. And what he spoke to me was that, Chris, tell your people that even in their crisis, they can be close to me. Please draw near to me in the midst of their crisis. So in essence, that's my message, y'all. The message is that we can be close to God in our crisis. We can be close. I would encourage you to be close to God in the midst of your crisis. As I've read the Bible throughout the years, I, I've noticed that the Bible, and maybe you've noticed this too, that the Bible is filled with challenging circumstances. The Bible is filled with men and women that have gone through lots and lots of crisis and difficulty. I mean, I think about David, right? David went through a lot. David went through a lot. He was persecuted by Saul, almost killed on a couple of occasions. Then his son was coming after him to kill him. I mean, how challenging is that? Having your life literally um, at risk because of very real threats. And even from your closest kin, from your, from your son, that's, that's a difficult circumstance. That's a, I would consider that a crisis, right? I think, about, I think about Jesus himself when he was going through that point of, God, if you can make this cup pass from me, please do. Please do because this is hard. This is not easy knowing that your life is about to be taken Yet the perspective that he had was, yet not my will, 
but thy will be done. And that's an example that I take to heart in the midst of some of the most challenging circumstances, knowing whose you are and being able to draw near to God in the midst of that challenge. And then the book that I'm going to focus on this morning, and I say book because there's a lot there, is the book of Job. If you guys have done any reading of the Bible, you know that the book of Job, which happens to be the oldest book of the Bible, is filled with crisis. Some very, very difficult and challenging circumstances happened to Job. And the thing was, it's not because of anything he had done. Sometimes, I, I like to say this, sometimes life just be lifing, right? Like things just happen. And in the case of Job, we see off the, off the cuff from the beginning that he was a person, he was a man who was after God's own heart. He was somebody who was blameless in the sight of the Lord. He was a good man. He kept God first in his life, but things came and things started happening. And we notice that it was all an attack of the enemy, but a lot of very real things happened to him. From losing all of his possessions, this was a man who was extremely, extremely wealthy. And in the case of Job, his wealth was tied up often in his possessions, things like livestock, those types of things. And we notice that right off the rip, he loses all of it. All of his possessions are wiped out are lost. But then not only that, as he's receiving the news that all of his possessions have been taken away. We were just talking this morning with the pastoral team about a, a, a boo-boo that happened with some kind of retirement planning where Google deleted 1.25 billion worth of different stocks and things. Like, wow, that, that's a big boo-boo, right? All of a sudden, this $1.25 billion exists in the ethers, and then the next instance, it's gone. They were able to fix that error, is my understanding. But that's quite an error. And I think it shows the fact that from one moment to the other, everything that we own can be taken from us. It's a very real thing. While Job is receiving that news, what happens? Another messenger comes to tell him that, hey, your kids, all of your kids were celebrating, they were feasting, they were just having a good time. Winds blew, the house collapsed, and they are all dead. So he lost all his possessions, then he loses all of his children. That's, I, I can't even, like, I can't fathom that. That's, that's, that's a hard, like, I put myself in that position, which is, uh, it's, it's a yucky place to be. But putting yourself in that position, how would I respond to that? I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I think the Bible says he tore his robe, and man, I get that. What else are you going to do but just, ah, that's, that's wild to me. And then we go to, that's just chapter 1, by the way. That's just chapter 1 of the book of Job. We go to chapter 2, and we see that, okay, the devil is kind of talking with God, and the devil's telling God, well, like, of course he's still going to worship you. You've only taken his stuff and his loved ones. How about you touch his body? You touch his body, and then he'll surely curse you and want to die. God was like, okay, touch his body, but you can't kill him. You can't kill him. Okay, so he does, and inflicts him with a terrible, terrible illness, a terrible, terrible uh, pain with sores in his body. And he does come to a place where he curses the day that he was born. That's what he comes, and I mean, that's, that's relatable. If you're going through all of this, you start questioning, why am I, why was I even born? Like, I get the humanity in that. That's a crisis. That is a hard, hard place to be, to the point where his wife comes up and kind of just tells him, Job, literally, curse the day you were born, curse your God, and just move on. There's a whole message in that, but I'm not going to go that route. What does end up happening that I think is very powerful is that his friends came around. His boys came around. His squad came around. His tribe came around. And that, that marked 
the difference in his life. In chapter 3, it's where we get this speech from Job where he wants to curse the day he died. But in chapter 4 is where Eliphaz, his friend, starts to encourage him, starts to talk to him. And I just want to point out the importance of those with whom you surround yourself. The importance of whom consists of your inner circle. The core of your, your close friends. It's so important who those people that you allow into your inner circle are. Because it can absolutely make the difference in how you respond to life and challenging circumstances. I want to read a fair amount of scripture this morning, my friends. And I'm going to read from Job chapter 5, verse 1 through 16. It's a lot of Bible we're going to be reading today. That's, that's right. That's right. And this is Eliphaz's response as it continues to Job. Now remember this. Job was in some of the hardest place of his life. And the Bible talks that for a long time, his friends just sat with him. They just sat with him. Sometimes you just need people to do life with you. Words don't necessarily, they can't necessarily express the fullness of what's happening. But you just need people to sit with you in a dark space, figuratively, maybe even literally, and just be with you. That power of human connection, that power of sharing the same space with another person. There's power in that connection. And his friends did that with him for a long time. Job was in a big crisis, y'all. Like, what do you say to a person who has lost all of that in the course of a very short amount of time? I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. We're going to hear some of the words. But for a long time, again, they just sat together. And then Eliphaz, he asks for permission to speak, which I think there's a whole lesson in that, right? Because advice that's unsolicited is often not received well. But he asked for permission to speak, and when Job gave him that permission, then he shared with him two chapters worth of words. We're just going to read what chapter 5 says. This is what Eliphaz says to Job. Cry for help, but will anyone answer you? Which of the angels will help you? Surely resentment destroys the fool, and jealousy kills the simple. I have seen that fools may be successful for the moment, but then come sudden disaster. Their children are abandoned from far from help. They are crushed in court with no one to defend them. The hungry devour their harvest, even when it is guarded by brambles. The thirsty pant after their wealth, but evil does not spring from the soil, and trouble does not sprout from the earth. People are born for trouble, as readily as sparks fly up from the fire. I'm going to pause there for a second. You know, that's one of the things that I personally have learned in my life, that trouble comes Crisis is often inevitable, and that's going to be my first point. So I want to highlight that out. Crisis is a part of life. Troubles is a part of the human experience. And the Bible right here even says it very clearly. People are born for trouble. Number eight. If I were you, I would go to God and present my case to him. He does great things to marvelous. He does great things too marvelous to understand. He performs, hold, let's just pause for a second. What type of words and encouragement is this from a friend? This is the type of thing I want to hear. Chris, personally, when I'm going through some challenging circumstances, when I'm going through some very difficult situations, and I praise Jesus that I haven't been through things to the extent that Job, because I don't know the way I would respond, so I'm grateful for that. But when we're going through challenges, I love the way Eliphaz recognizes the fact that this is hard. This is not a simple circumstance that you're going through. You, my friends, what you're going through at home, the crisis that you are experiencing, I am not trying to negate that. I am not trying to say that it's not a hard circumstance. It is hard. It is, in fact, a very difficult circumstance. It is extremely, extremely challenging. And I honor that. I honor the difficulty and what it is that you are going through. And in saying that, I know 
that I would go to God and present my case to him. Because he does great things too marvelous to understand. He performs countless miracles. He gives rain for the earth and water for the fields. He gives prosperity to the poor and protects those who suffer. He frustrates the plans of the schemers so the work of their hands will not succeed. Anybody scheming against you? I don't know. Maybe. But the Bible says that he frustrates the plans of the schemers so the work of their hands will not succeed. He traps the wise in their own cleverness so their cunning schemes are thwarted. They find it is dark in the daytime and they grope at noon as if it were night. He rescues the poor from the cutting words of the strong and rescues them from the clutches of the powerful. And so at last the poor have hope and the snapping jaws of the wicked are shut. That's, to me, extremely, extremely powerful. So powerful. Because at the end of the day, my friends, like we've discussed, crisis is inevitable. It's something that is simply a part of our human experience. How we respond to that crisis is what makes the difference. How we respond to those challenging circumstances is what really makes it, makes the response. And quite frankly, there's sometimes where it's not decisions even that we've made. It's just the circumstance of life that hard things happen. Life is not always easy. And challenging circumstances arise. How we deal and how we respond to those crises, the mentality that we have and the frame of mind in which we're able to encourage ourselves is what will make the difference in moving forward. Crisis is inevitable. It is inevitable. How many of you like crisis? I saw not a I saw one thumbs down, but not a single hand raised. That's real. None of us like Chris does not like crisis. In my flesh, y'all, I'd rather be comfortable. If I'm speaking real honestly, I'd rather be cushy. I would rather be comfortable. I don't want hard circumstances. However, I have noticed looking back, it's those crises and the way that I handle them that has made me the man that I am today. And the more I'm able to push through those crises with my mind focused on Christ, drawing close to him is what's given me personally the strength to move forward. Newsflash, y'all, crisis happens. It happens. I've heard somebody once say, and this is kind of a, I, you know, when you do strength finders, have you guys, anybody here heard of like Clifton strength finders? Yeah. When you do those things, my top strength is positivity. So that's, that's a thing for Chris. But I've heard people say that if you're not in a crisis, you're either coming into one or coming out of one. It's like, ouch. That's, I don't know if that's realist or if that's pessimist. But I've heard it said. So interestingly enough, what my thing is, that as we go through life, we will face them. And maybe right now you're going through a financial crisis. Maybe right now you're going through a space where you don't know where your next meal is going to come from. Maybe you're in a space where you're struggling to pay your mortgage. Maybe that's your experience right now. Maybe things at your office are a little bit tenuous. You're not exactly sure if you're going to have a job next month. Maybe your occupation, your business is moving elsewhere, and you're not exactly sure how you're going to navigate that. And that's creating a crisis. Maybe within your family, you're experiencing the backsliding of a child. Maybe you and your spouse are having tons of arguments, and they're not good. Maybe within that closeness of your family, there's some difficulty there's some challenges. Maybe, again, your marriage is kind of hanging in the balance. Maybe the health of your loved ones, the health of your family, of your friends, maybe your own health is in the balance. All of these are really big deals that we face in life. They are crisis. And once again, the way we respond. I've heard it say that there's type three typical responses, right? Fight, flight, or freeze. You guys heard of that? Most typically we hear fight or flight, but I would add the freeze, fight, flight, or freeze. How do we respond? Are we in a space where we just freeze and we do nothing? We're like a deer in the headlights. 
Do we come to a place where we're able to just run away from the crisis, where we isolate, where we don't connect with our loved ones, where we don't connect with our friends, where we just completely run away from the problem because I'd rather hide my head in the dirt than face what's happening? Or do we fight? Do we come together and do we move forward? I would encourage us to come together and move forward. Ephesians 1.11 says, Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. For he chose us in advance, and he makes everything work out according to his plan. I'm going to read that last part. And he makes everything work out according to his plan. God has the details of our lives worked out. I draw comfort in that. I draw comfort in the fact that God has my life worked out in his hands. And while difficult things happen, because that is the truth, there's comfort in knowing that at the end of the day, he is in control. What's even more impressive to me is that he uses those details, the details, the hard things in our lives, consistent with his plan, in making us more like his son. Included in that plan is crisis, my friends. The implication that I receive from that is, as hard as you or I might try to avoid it, the times of personal chaos and threat are simply unavoidable. So if we can't avoid it, it's important for us to consider how God would have us face them how God would have us face those difficult circumstances. What is his response for us in those difficult times? How does he want us to face those challenges? That's the way, that's my prayer oftentimes when I'm going through hard times. You know, I've been alive, I've been on this earth for X amount of years, wink, wink. Um, and I remember my B.C., I remember my before Christ. There was a lot of trials. There was a lot of tribulations. For those that know me, know a little bit about that lifestyle. And incarceration was a very real thing. Making poor decisions was a very real thing. Crisis was a very real thing. And then I look at my life over the past almost 19 years since I've been serving Jesus. And crisis hasn't stopped. Just because I'm serving Christ doesn't mean that crisis stops. Crisis just looks a little bit different. And part of that is because of whom is on my side. You know, it has been my observation that even in the midst of crisis, Christ provides practical provisions. Practical provisions. James 5, 13 and 14 says, and I'm paraphrasing here, Are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. I'm going to repeat that. Are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you. I've talked before about the power of friendships. The power of your circle, your tribe, your people. Coming and set, spending time with you and speaking life into you. It has been my experience that oftentimes the practical provision in the midst of a crisis comes through my family, through the family of God. I think about, again, some of these instances, some of those very marked moments. You guys ever seen that, um, oh gosh, it's, it's that movie with the cartoons and that they're like all the emotions inside, I forget the name. Inside out, right? And those core memories, those little amusement parks that are created in the character's mind. A lot of times for Chris, those core memories have come around difficult circumstances. And I'll never forget, when I moved to Guatemala, 26-year-old young man, uh, about two years sober at that point, going into a culture that is not mine, being asked to start a Christ-centered residential treatment facility for men with substance use issues. That was a hard endeavor. It was so, so hard. And when I got there, I had never really been given to depression. 
right? That wasn't a thing really for me. But those first six months that I was there, looking back, I was going through, through a point of depression where getting out of bed was very hard for me, where doing the work that God had called me to do was very challenging. I felt alone. I felt isolated. I didn't have family. I didn't have friends. I was in a country that was not my own, in a culture that was not my own, speaking a language which I knew, but at that point in my life wasn't really my first language. It was hard for me. I felt alone. And there were many times that I cried out to God, and I was like, Lord, why am I here? What am I doing in this place? Why do you have me in this space? I was going through a crisis. I could have responded in many ways, but what the way that I did respond, being in a space that was unfamiliar to me, was drawing near to God. And what he spoke to me at that point, which goes to show the faithfulness of God, he responds, when I came to him with those questions, why am I, like real, like ugly crying. You guys ever been there like that? Yes, exactly. That ugly crying space, I was like, God, why do you have me here? I, I, I'm too young. The men that are coming here are way older than me. They can be my dad. One of them literally told me, you're too young for me to learn anything from you. The, just all of these experiences. Like people are leaving right and left. Nobody is really finding you. Guys are just coming in and out, leaving, going back to their addiction. People are dying. Why am I here? This is distinct. I don't like this. This is not fun. It's not comfortable. I like comfortableness in my life. And what the Lord responded to me was very, very simple. And his words to me, Chris, you are here for the one that stays. That's what he said to me. You are here for the one that decides to stick through it. And looking back, God provided so much in my eight years there. We graduated on average one or two men a year. Men that were then able to have their lives restored unto them. Families that were reunited. Children who, when these men came into our program, did not have a father. The father was kind of the embarrassment of the town and of the family. That's real. But at the end, families were reunited. Families were restored. I left Guatemala with a family. I left there. It's, it's a real thing. I left there with friends that are friends for life. You're going to meet one of them next week who's coming in from Chicago to preach. Like friends that have been, like friends that are like brothers, like family. I found my wife there, moved to the United States with a wife that was very, very pregnant. And just God really did a work throughout the course of that situation. God made a change for me in the course of my crisis. I went through the crisis. I wasn't able to avoid it. It was a very real thing, but the way we respond in that hard moment makes the difference. Could I have packed up my stuff and left? Yes. That's a real response. I could have been like, no, dude, this is, I had made a two-year commitment, but who's going to keep me there if I don't want to stay? I could have been like, this is too hard. I'm not doing it, right? If I was to have done that, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have the beautiful bride that I have. I wouldn't have the beautiful children that I have. Life would be very different if I would have bowed out from that crisis. But pushing through it, drawing near to God, drawing close to Christ in the midst of my crisis allowed me to not only work through it, but to see the bigger picture in the midst of my circumstance. To see that, yes, I'm going through some suffering, but it's not unique it's, it's really not, and that sounds harsh, but it's not unique. Life is hard, but the outcome was way worth the challenge that it took to get to that outcome. My dad would always say hindsight is 2020, and I get that. Looking back now where I am in my journey, looking back, I thank God for those difficult circumstances. They weren't easy, but they have definitely formed me and allowed me to be where I am today and given me the victory that I am able to enjoy today. Going back to the plug of Freedom Group, y'all, 
truly, truly, I want to offer this, and I say it with all my heart. Like, that is a space, Freedom Group, where we can come together and really create that community and that family. If you guys, I, I, I just don't want people to have to go through this alone because I know how challenging crisis can be and difficult circumstances are. Whether it's with you personally or a loved one, guys, you don't have to go through this by yourself. God provides practical provisions, oftentimes, once again, in the form of the family of God. That's why it's called the family of God. I went to Guatemala with no family. I came back with a family. More than that, when I was coming back to the United States, I'll never forget, my prayer with Mighty and our group of people was, Lord, please, 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 surround us with family in Lincoln, Nebraska, the way you surrounded us with family in Guatemala. We know how, I know how hard it is to go to one of these types of endeavors. You're calling us. We got that. But please, I don't want to do this by myself. Surround us with family. That was our prayer, y'all. And guess what? We've been here for nine years, and he has. He surrounded us with family. He surrounded us with you guys. You guys are our family. And how often do we have to lean on you guys for strength? We don't have to do this by ourselves. My wife had surgery a couple of weeks ago, and I'm constantly getting text messages from loved ones sitting right here in the, in the chairs from the pastoral team all the time. Hey, how's mighty doing how's her recovery guys that touches your heart knowing that you don't have to go through these difficult circumstances on your own is so 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 powerful so powerful knowing that family comes around you not only family but we can draw near to God himself and he responds crisis brings us closer to God my friends crisis brings us closer to God. Again, I'm, I'm a guy of saints. It was told to me once when I was younger that oftentimes you realize God is all you need when God is all you have. And I don't know if you've ever been in one of those places where God's, oh yeah, I got Nathan up here going, yeah, he knows, he knows, just coming back from the mission field for nine months. Sometimes that's all you've got. When you've got, when all, when God is all you got, you realize that he is all you need. I want to do a couple more plugs. My time is running to an end. I want to remind us that the Holy Spirit is our comforter. That's one of his names, is our comforter. There's a real supernatural ministry that he has, and it's the ministry of encouragement. And he gives that to us, and Philippians 4, 7 would say it surpasses all understanding when we're going through these trials, when we're going through these tribulations, when we're going through these hard times, I would encourage you to draw near to God. The response that you get from him may look a variety of different ways depending on what your circumstance is. But what we can count on is the fact that God will be there with us. His spirit will be with us. He will offer comfort in the middle of trying circumstances. He will come close to us, the Bible says, when we come close to him and sometimes that's hard it's hard it's hard because we're feeling some kind of way it's hard because life is happening around us and we feel like there's a thousand on our left ten thousand on our right but the word says that harm to me shall not come because God is my refuge he is my strong tower he is my ever-present help in time of need my friends as I'm closing right now and the worship ministry can start coming up Crisis is real. Crisis is something that happens. It's unavoidable. But the way that we respond to crisis is what makes the difference. And I would encourage you to draw near to God. As we draw near to God, once again, the Bible says he draws near to us. That doesn't necessarily mean that our crisis is going to be removed from us. That doesn't necessarily mean we're going to see that thing that we want to see happen. When we look at Paul in the Bible, he prayed. He had this thing that he calls a thorn in his side. And he prayed for that thorn to be removed three times. He prayed for it to be removed three times. God didn't remove it. But he did respond. God responded in the midst of that challenging circumstance and told him, 
my grace is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you. I would encourage you, friends, whatever it is that you're going through, whatever it is that you're going to go through, we've established this. Crisis happens. Draw near to God. Draw near to your church family. Draw near to your Christ-minded friends. Allow us, as the family of God, to surround you, which is hard. Maybe you just need us to sit with you in that dark space. Not say anything, but just be. Just exist with you. Cool. That's what we're here for. Maybe you need words of encouragement, Christly words of encouragement. Let us encourage you in the Lord. All the while, you are drawing near to God through prayer. We are drawing near to God for you on your behalf in prayer as well. Understanding that the Holy Spirit, he is our comforter. He will comfort you in the midst of your circumstance. And God will show up in the midst of your crisis. Because as you draw near to him, he will draw near to you. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you because we know that you are God. We know, Lord, that life is hard. Your son, Jesus, went through some hard times. And he's God. Life is hard. But we know that even in the midst of our hard times, we can draw near to you. We know that even in the midst of our hard times, you provide practical provisions, Lord. We pray that you give us a mind that is open to receiving what it is that you have for us. And we pray that we have eyes to be able to see what it is that you're doing in the midst of our circumstance. But Lord, even if we're not able to, we just pray that you show up in the midst of our hard times. Lord, we love you and we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to pray for a couple things here, but I like what Pastor Chris is saying there. That It's that closeness, but the closeness starts, has to have a beginning point, right? And it, it all starts with a, a relationship and getting to, getting to know someone. And in this case, it's getting to know, well, Jesus is our Lord and Savior. So I want you guys, everybody, if you could just close your eyes, bow your heads for a moment. And I'm just going to give, some, give us a moment to respond here. And maybe you heard these things today and go, yep, I'm definitely one of those people that's walking through a crisis right now. And I, I need something. I need I need help. I need someone. Um, and, and I've just been hearing these awesome things. But it, it all starts with really that relationship with Jesus. And so if that's you this morning, if you've never accepted him before, if you've never had that relationship with him before, in just a moment, I'm going to give you an opportunity just to raise your hand. So everybody's eyes are closed and heads are down. We're not out to embarrass anybody or anything like that. But it's just making a public declaration, just saying, yep, that's me. Or maybe you're someone at one point in time in your life you had walked with the Lord and, and boy, you know, the, maybe those crises came up and you just said, I'm, I, and you kind of faded away and did your own thing. It wasn't like where Pastor Chris is saying, I could either turn into the Lord or turn away. And maybe you turned away and walked and did your own thing. But you hear this and it's a good reminder today. And you just, it excites something in your spirit and go, you know what? I had something and I let that go. But today is, I, I want to refresh that. And I want that relationship again. If that's you, here in just a second, I want you to raise your hand. So I'm just going to count. I'm, I'm going to make this nice and easy. I'm going to count down for you. And I'm going to start at three. When I get to past one here, I want you just to raise your hand. So in three, I want you just to remember what the Lord maybe had done in your life or the things that you've heard here today and just say, yep, that is for me. Two, maybe you hear uh, a voice even speaking to you right now or you feel something just in this room and we prayed about that this morning, that the spirit move in this place and you feel something in this place. Maybe that's you and, and, and you, wow, I don't know what that is, but I want, I want that, I need that. And one, that's going to be me right now. I want you just to raise your hand. If that's you, if you need him today, you want to start that relationship again today. Thank you. I see your hand. Thank you. I see your hand. Mm -hmm. 
Come on, today we're going to pray. I want everybody in a loud voice. We're going to pray this together this morning. And just believe for that. If you're joining us online as well, I want you to pray this prayer as well. And know that the Lord has something for you as well. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you today just as I am. Lord, I've had crisis in my life. And I don't want to walk that alone. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. <laughs> and Holy Spirit, be my comforter. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, that was awesome. That was an awesome decision right now that was just made. Come on, can we give these, those that raise their hand, can we cheer them on? Because that is an awesome thing that just happened here. You don't have to walk this thing alone. We, you, you can look around this room and I can tell you, there's a lot of us that have walked through a lot of things. And were it not for others sitting around walking through a lot of things, we wouldn't be here right now because we do have each other. Amen? And, and, maybe, and maybe that was you where he was saying specifically, you know what, I, I'm walking with the Lord. I got all these things, but there's some crisis. There's some things going on right now. I just want to pray an encouragement over you right now. Can we do that? Right? If you have something, just, just raise your hand. We don't need to know what it is. That's fine. The Lord knows what's going on. Just hold your hands up. We're just going to believe. Come on. Because we're just saying, Lord. I, I love this. There, there was a, an analogy I saw one time. So when you go to the Father, when you go to your natural father or mother, what do you do? C come here. Hands up. It's a submission, but it's also saying, I, I want more of you. Can, can I... So we're going to pray for that right now. Everyone, right now, we see these hands. Heavenly Father, you see these hands right now. Lord, you know the crisis. You know the things that are going on in each life, oh God. Lord, the, the, pains, that are, the, the pains and the things that even aren't seen. <laughs> Lord, those things on the inside, whether in the mind, oh God, in the spirit, in the body, oh God, those things today, oh Lord. We thank you. Send again your Holy Spirit into this place. Comfort each and every heart, each and every mind right now, oh God. We just thank you. We thank you. We stand on your word. Come on, we just stand on your word, oh God, that you are that comforter. You are that healer. You are that deliverer. You are mighty that right now, Lord, things are even being resolved. Lord, as we just stand and just say, Lord, I want you and I need you. <laughs> Lord, resolve this crisis. We just thank you for each and every one, oh God. Encourage each and every one, oh God. We just thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. Pastor Chris brought the word today. <laughs> that was a word for me. It's an encouragement that while we go through what we go through, we can walk with one another and we can walk with the Lord. He's our comforter. I hope you receive the word today. And I pray that if you are going through something, that you will reach to us so that we can stand with you. Just write us, um, call, something. Let us know what you are going through, and we will pray together with you and stand with you and walk with you in this walk. As we go forward into this week, we are praying for you that it is full of God's favor and his blessing, Amen. that you have everything that you need. He can provide for you. And so we're just praying for you as you go into the week. And we'll see you here again next time. surrender 
This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. Every lie and every doubt. This is my surrender. And I will make room for you to do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want to. And I will make room for you to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to. Here is where I lay it down, every burden, every crown. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. tradition break down the walls of all my religion your way is better your way is better shake up the ground of all my tradition break down the walls of all my religion your way is better yes your way is better shake up the ground of all my tradition break down the walls of all my religion, your way is better, your way is better, shake up the ground of all my tradition, break down the walls 